All right, Jacob, so this is what's going on. Um, this is where you're throwing from. Okay, if you compare other throwers to when their front foot hits the ground, you're going to look different. You're going to see their arm more back here. Okay, and this just gives them time. So <clears throat> I'm going to try to be as quick as I can with this. Your arm has to lay back. This is called external rotation. So that's maximum external rotation in both frames. Okay, then your arm has to snap forward into internal rotation. You're, you're getting to this pretty, pretty well. Um, from the side, I would be able to show you a little bit more um, as far as what your arm looks like as it's going to internal rotation, but that's fine. So all that's happening right now is your hand is on the outside part of the ball. Like you can see that. You're throwing a two-seam fastball, and it's on the outside part of the ball. To be honest with you, I don't know, like this ball on the left right here, that doesn't look like it has cut. Um, the ball on the right looks like it has cut. So it does look like you are getting on the outside more on the right than on the left. But to be honest with you, this is just the timing of your throw. So if you fly open a little bit, so let's say, let's say you land, okay, Let's say you're throwing from, so I say you're throwing from this position because this is, you don't, your arm doesn't lay back until you get to this position. So let's say your arm gets here one time. That, if your arm is there by the time you start throwing the ball, when I start seeing your arm lay back in external rotation, you're going to cut that ball worse. Okay? Let's say your arm is here, okay, instead of here, your arm is going to have time to get into internal rotation. When your arm goes into internal rotation, um, another way to think about that is when your arm goes into extension, your thumb will start rolling over to the ground. That's called pronation. So your hand is naturally doing this. The opposite of that, so if you acted like you were holding a bowl of soup from the bottom, okay, that's called supination. So you're, as you lay back into external rotation, your hand is, your palm is facing the sky. Okay, so your hand just might not be going into pronation soon enough based on how you're throwing, and that's what's causing you to be on the outside part of the ball. So the things that you suggested to me was maybe your grip or what your wrist was doing, like those are just not good ways to think about what's happening. Okay, so these are all where you're throwing from in this position, okay, has to do with how you got to foot strike. So all of the stuff that happens back here, okay, this is your issue, okay? So if you take yourself from the time you get into your leg kick until you just get into this position, okay, where that arm swings down and starts coming up, like go from there, take video of yourself from this position and compare it to what the best throwers do by the time their arm gets in the same position. So like if you took Araldus Chapman and you put him and you compared him to where his arm is sticking back. Or even just like, okay, right there your arm starts swinging up. Right there where your arm starts swinging up. Compare yourself from a side view to what he's doing then. That's going to give you your answer. It's not what's happening out here. This is These things are happening out here, but the reason why the ball is cutting has more to do with what happens at the beginning of your stride and how you move toward your target. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it at that. I'll tell you, you are going to learn more by looking at yourself from the side and comparing what you do in and out of your leg kick compared to the best throwers because they do things differently. And I'm going to leave it up to you to do some homework and find that out because it's pretty obvious if you do your homework.